Hi, and welcome to part five of our PowerShell Universal tutorial series. So in the first couple videos, we saw how to set up PowerShell Universal, how to configure some different API routes or endpoints. We saw how to create just a basic route, routes with query strings, and a route that accept a body style payload. And then we also saw how to add authentication to those routes, even with just the free license. We saw two different ways in order that you can actually control that authentication, but also be able to give a different output for the API route based on the access level that the person logged in with. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the user interfaces in PowerShell Universal. That will actually let us create a GUI or a web interface using PowerShell Universal, using PowerShell to create all of it. And we can actually interact with the endpoints that we've created with these user interfaces. We're able to basically create very easily accessible web interfaces for our users to be able to interact with and do a bunch of different things using PowerShell code in the back end. Today, we're going to be creating a very, very simple user interface. We're going to be creating our Hello World interface. We're going to have a button, which is going to modify basically a label changing the text of it to hello world from its original saying. And we are going to be able to see how to do that right now. So without further ado, let's actually go ahead and let's get started. So we're already in our PowerShell universal window here. We're going to click on the left hand side for user interfaces and then click on apps. And here you're going to see we don't have any apps created. Now, if you're used to PowerShell three, uh, PowerShell universal 3.x, um, this used to be called dashboards. Now this version actually does a much nicer job at creating apps. I think myself and creating pages, the designing user interface is much, much more user friendly in this one. Uh, I enjoy it quite a bit more than version three. So let's actually go ahead and let's create our new app here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to call it hello world. And we're going to leave the description blank and we're going to set the URL to hello world. And we're going to leave the template as blank and we're going to click on OK here. Now, just like our routes, we have a bunch of different options here. We can edit the properties. Now, what I like to do, just like we did for our API routes, is I like to set the environment default to PowerShell 7. And I like to remove the authentication just for now. We're going to take a look at adding authentication to the GUIs in a later video, because you can also fully control what gets displayed on the page based on the level of authentication that the user has, which is really, really cool. Uh, so we're going to click on OK here. And now we're going to go ahead and click on Edit Details. And this is going to give us the ability to actually edit our page here. So now we have our new UD app and we get our Get UD Page Home. Now you're going to see three home pages this but if you see that I hover over one of them it hovers over all of them you're most likely just going to see one unless you delete your app and recreate it um so I have unfortunately it's a little bit buggy but I believe if you just restart um your actual service this probably gets fixed um there's a few little things with PowerShell Universal where if you something weird's happening restarting the service will often fix it so we're going to click on home here and we actually get our page. So by default, you're just going to have this UD typography on your page. We're actually going to leave it because that's actually the text that we're going to be modifying. So by default, it says home and you can actually see a lot more details on this label here. If you click on the label or if you click on on the left hand side, you're going to see components. Let's actually just zoom in here so you guys can see it a little bit better. We actually have components here and kind of like in Visual Studio, um, Visual Studio 2022 or any other version in the past, we have a bunch of different properties that we can edit, which is really, really neat. So you can see that our text here says home and that's what it says here. So if I actually say home testing, um, we're going to see that it actually does change here. So that's perfect. And then we have a bunch of different things like style. So we can style our text here. Uh, we can change the font weight as well. We can put class names on there. We can align the different text. Uh, but we're just going to leave everything as it is for, for that here. 
and we're going to click on go back. Now you're going to see components. You're going to think that you're going to add components through here. That's not where you're actually going to add them. Unfortunately, it's in a very, very bad spot. But if I actually move over to the side here, you're going to see a add components button right on the side here. So you're going to click on this here. And then we get tons of different options of what we can actually add. So you're going to see there is a ton of different things here that we can actually add. We're going to want to add a button here. So it's going to be a button and a universal. And it's going to actually add it in here. And we're going to see our button here with no text in it. But that's quite OK. We Once again, we can click on the button or we can click on the uh, menu on the left hand side on our button here and we can take a look at it. Now, another thing that you can actually do is click on view code up here. And once again, let me just zoom in here so you guys can actually see, we actually get all of our text here. So you can see this is our, our label. It says home. And if I do home testing here, uh, so you will not be able to edit this. Uh, it is a read only. Um, so that is perfectly fine. Um, but you will be able to copy paste this code. So that is also something that could be very handy if you want to build it by code only. I find the user interface is fairly, uh, fairly good for that though. Um, so we can actually go ahead and click on the button here. And we can start modifying some of our properties here. So the first thing that I really like to do is changing the ID to something a little bit more user friendly. I like to name them uh, BTN for button. And then we're going to say BTN click me. And then we're going to put in for the text. We're just going to put click me exclamation mark. And then what we can actually do is just go back here. And then what I want to do as well is actually just try to kind of move these around a little bit just so you guys can see that you guys can actually fully, fully change the way that it actually looks here. So we changed our button and our label placement here. We can even change our button to take up the full width. And what you can do is you can also drag it longer if you want to make it longer as well. So let's make it a little bit longer. Let's make this label a little bit longer as well. And we're going to make that one's good. All right. So now once we click on our button here, we're going to see a on click button here. So we can actually click on edit here. And this will open up a code page where we'll actually be able to edit what we're doing. So to actually change this um, label here, what we actually need to do is click on edit here. And let me just zoom in a little bit for us. What we're going to want to do is set dash UD element. And then we want to specify our ID. Our ID is going to be home text. And then what we want to do is we want to set the properties. I like to do properties. You can do directly content for some uh, elements, but you're going to want to edit some elements where you're going to have to specify properties because it is not a short form in the parameters. So I tend to do every single element via the properties hash table. And then we're going to do a content here equals double quotation here. And we're going to say hello world exclamation mark. And we can just click off of the code page here. And now if we click on the view code, what we will actually see is we will actually see our code on the on click event. So this is actually very, very useful. If you want to start building your pages completely through code, you actually can do that. And this would actually, you can kind of build out in the designer and see what the code would actually be. It gives you a really, really good idea how to do it. Um, whereas in three, uh, the graphical user designer really wasn't good. 
um, I found anyways, and I had to do it all by code. It was a little bit more difficult, but thankfully the documentation for PowerShell Universal is very, very easy to read. Um, so it was very easy to figure out eventually. Um, so once we actually have all that here, we can click on save here and we can come back to our dashboard and let's go back here and we can go ahead and we can actually view our app and there is our app here. Now you're going to notice that in the different zooms, it changes where the button is and that's because we changed the placement of our button under a specific version of the website. So very similar to how you would build a website mobile friendly. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you test your app, uh, especially if you know that your users are going to be accessing it on a computer or on a phone. Um, it is very, very useful. So here we can see that in this zooming out level or this view level, they are over there. Um, but then in this one, it is back over there. So that is a little trick here that you will have to kind of coordinate. I find that managing that through code is a little bit easier and we will see how to do that in another video as well. I just wanted to get you guys really set up uh, in order to be able to create a page, be able to create a button. And once we click on that button here, it changes the text in the label. So you guys have created now your first app in PowerShell Universal. It is a very, very simple app, but if you refresh the page, it goes back to home. If you click on it, it now says, hello world. You've actually been able to interact with your page fully and have a web interface that is fully created from PowerShell. Uh, so as you can possibly guess, there is a lot of power here that you can do. You can create apps that fully interact with Active Directory as well, which is what we're going to be creating in our project. But we're going to be taking a look at a few other components and seeing how to create pages with code in a future video as well. So be sure to stay tuned for that. If you guys want to see any specific components um, to be looked at as well, or if you guys have a project that you guys would like to see done in PowerShell Universal, please let me know in the comment section down below. Um, but please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.